Good afternoon. I hope you enjoy the break. I am Professor Lee Seok Jae from College of Humanities at SNU, and I'm also a member of National Strategic Committee and SNU. And I will be the moderator for session three. And in session three, we will be having the discussions and the presentations on COVID-19 and education, technology, and ethics. The first presentation in session three will be made by Director Kim Jin Suk of Education Service Division of CARES. The presentation is titled, The Implications of COVID-19 on Education and the Challenges. And uh, many are joining us via online, just like the two previous sessions. I hope that you can also pose a lot of questions so that we can uh, discuss them and respond to them in the Q&A session. Please give the director a big hand. Good afternoon. At, I'm working at Carey's. So online class and distance education is provided by CARES, and I'm the director of Education Service Division in charge of that. So I will be presenting on the COVID-19 and its implication for education. Before and after the COVID-19, there will be the many changes in society and in culture, as well as in education. And before the COVID-19, I think the Korean education has been confined in the fixed frame. But during the COVID-19 outbreak, we were able to see the potential to widen the frame, frame or the structure of education. And after the COVID-19 outbreak, we have the vision and we have the challenge to break its fixed frame, frame and to develop the Korea's education further. Let's talk about the education and leveling the playing field for education. This has caused the social conflicts and it was the ideology that has been introduced in many society. But uh, as you can see, that was the vision set forth. But in reality, the inequality were widened in many societies. The human's mind, shape, the policy, but if we develop the better policy and then we can provide more learning opportunities for our children that you see within the fixed frame, the students are having a limited learning experiences. So during the COVID-19 outbreak, well, what happened to school opening? The school opening was postponed and pushed back three times. And because it was impossible to postpone again and again, the school resumed online, starting from the third graders of high schools. The public education platform was established by CARES, the e-learning site, and online class of EBS were also made available to students. And they served as the alternative to providing the educational materials to students. And within just two weeks since April the 3rd, the e-learning site was visited and used by the around 3 million users. So that was the mission that has to be achieved. And that was the recognition of the problem that we had at this stage and to expand the server and to expand the service that we were able to lay the foundation and widen the service of the cloud. And as a result, and during that preparation stage in the media, the many concerns were made. 
and by sharing the information transparently that we try to address the issue and through participation and through empathy that we were able to solve the issue a bit. And public sector and private sector and all the teachers at the schools were involved in developing this online education platform. And with a few data, the I can tell you that if all the education was provided 100% online, that system was established and was stabilized through the stabilization of the server. And that was possible. But was learning taking place online 100%? The over 2 million students and teachers are constantly using the Widurang and e-learning sites constantly up until now. And if you look at the number of visit by user that you see, usually the user visit the site 10 times, uh, an average of 10 times per day. So it this means that users are not just visiting the site and it means that rather they are attending each classes and taking the online instructions throughout the day. So I can tell you that online classes have been provided quite efficiently. And if you look at the graph, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., so in terms of the instruction that we usually take attendance at around 9 a.m., so this shows that we weren't really flexible in uh, introducing the online classes because the mo mo in most cases the attendance was taken at around 9 p.m. 9 a.m. and from uh, up until the 8 to 9 p.m. the preparation for the following day instructions were made by the teachers and e-learning site and the EBS and the Widurang sites were made available to the student, but they are not just being consumed. There was the classroom set up online. And within that classroom, that content was uploaded every day by the teachers. So we can say that it has been provided and the class had been provided every day. So the May, the second week that you, we see that we have an accumulated number of contents uploaded, it's about the 1.1 million. And as of today, the around over 4 million contents has been uploaded by teachers. And late April, the Ministry of Education conducted the survey on teachers. So how, what kind of content do you use most, mostly for online class? They, the most of the teachers say they use the digital textbook and the EBS educational contents. But what's in particular, 33% responded that they create a, their own educational contents for the students. So the class, it's an interaction between teachers and students. So we can see from this response from the teachers that within a really short period of time, the teachers voluntarily created the contents for their students. And as you can see from the slide uh, also, that there were many, the communities being utilized by the teachers to for the professional development. So ICT has been used a lot by the many teachers. And out of uh, 400,000 teachers, around 7 to 10 percent of the teachers have been utilizing the ICT for their classes. And they played a really important role in 
transitioning to online learning during the COVID-19, the Widurang, EBS, and the e-learning site were utilized, but also there were other, the private, the content provider that were used as the source of the learning materials. And the meanings and the implications and the takeaways of the distance education have been evaluated. And late April that we conducted the study on the parents and we asked, uh, do you think the distant learning has helped prevent learning loss in children? And 49% responded it was helpful. But some of them responded that it was so difficult for them to supervise their student. But there was a consensus among the parents that it was the online education was quite helpful in preventing the learning loss for their children. And what when we asked uh, what did you find most difficult in online classes? And the re if you look at the responses, the some had to make a call to their student to wake them up. And uh, they also said that taking attendance was uh, difficult. And majority of them responded that creating the content for online classes was the d difficult part they found in preparing for the online education. And what do you think uh, should be supported the most for the future? And for each subject and for each instruction, more digital content should be available to the teachers so that they can better prepare for online classes. So rather than just simply taking attendance in classes, the teachers find it really difficult to get the students' attention and to provide their student with the quality education online through the LMS system. And they wish the solid foundation can be laid down for them to provide a better quality online education. And when we ask the t students, uh, the teachers, that would you like to utilize um, this distance education for the future as well? And the 44% responded that they would like to do it. So it's not just a fad for the short term during the crisis that 44% responded that they will like to use distance education for the future that we can expand the experience for the students when we utilize the distance education so we can expand the framework of education. So that's the data showing us that um, such things. Yes, depending on the district, the situation differ, but schools are physically resumed now. And throughout the process, we now have a different perception and the different views on education now. So after the COVID-19, how will education will be changed? So we have to revisit and re-examine the value of education. We need to have a solid value on the national level. So we should go beyond the physical framework of school and we should think education as an important thing for fostering the human beings through exchange between the school, homes, and the society. So far, many people thought when the technology is advanced further, the AI will do a better job in teaching students. But because of the COVID-19 outbreak, that many people realized 
that there was one teacher with 24 years of experience. And this teacher told me that this is the first time that this teacher heard her students saying that I really want to go to school and I want to meet with my parents and I want to have, um, I want to go to the cafeteria at school to have lunch there. So we've, many people realize that the role of school is not just confined to teaching students. It's about interacting with the friends and teachers, and it's about having the empathy and building the citizenship and building the physical strength as well. So it was a great opportunity for many people to revisit the role of the school. In this sense, we can also see why the teachers are making a call to the students to wake them up. These teachers view the student not as just a part of the group. They are viewing the students as individuals. So we should provide the customized education according to the needs of the students. I believe that many, as agreed by many researchers, that the K quarantine was uh, worthy of a good evaluation result. But I think the K education that has been provided amid the COVID-19 outbreak was also worthy of good evaluation result. And that was possible based on the dedication of the teachers and the commitment of the experts and online without compromising the value of offline education was able to be provided. So we can for sure tell that the K education and the Korean education's response during the COVID-19 was a worthy of good evaluation results. So the students are, we can break the frame for education. And for each subject, the focus before was just delivering the knowledge in that subject. Compared with the past, the uh, environment within the classroom has been changed a lot. But we can now even overcome the physical barriers of the classrooms. And we really realized how we can do that during the COVID-19. When we think about the providing the customized learning opportunity for each student, that we might be able to take advantage of the advanced technologies available. And AI, big data might be able to use to strengthen the learning of the students. So school can play an even bigger role of unleashing the creativity of the students and to help the students to collaborate with the others and better interact with the others. So that was the implications that we can draw from the COVID-19 outbreak for education. So distance education and online classes that have been provided to the students during the COVID-19 outbreak, that can be integrated and the converged with the offline learning. And that could be possible through solidarity, collaboration, and the differentiation and expansion of the concept of education. So users of education should be able to have easy access. And what should be done by the companies can be realized through the solid structure that we build. So the individual's data and the AI should be applied to provide the better quality education. Then we, if we can do that through Edutech ecosystem that we build, I'm sure that our students can create a new industry I think I pushed the wrong button. So lastly, what I have been presenting 
it's about how we can shift our perception or the perspective on education. It must be the previous generation that has made this fixed frame of education. But we can overcome this frame of education. We can imagine something new and make that into reality. So we have to come up with the better measures to realize that. And that's how I would like to conclude my presentation. So that will be the challenge for the Korean education. Thank you. Director Kim Jin Suk, once again, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. In education, so how the the CARES has been responding in providing the online classes to the student, and what will be the challenges uh, that lying ahead were well presented by your presentation.